Hi guys! Not having a fridge aboard the boat is very inconvenient. I enjoy cooking very much, but I don't do a lot of it aboard the boat, and that's mainly due to the fact that I don't have a fridge. When I had originally planned my two liverboard tests, I figured that by this time of year, I could simply leave the items that require refrigeration outside of the boat and just use Mother Nature as some sort of giant fridge. Earlier today it was 9 degrees Celsius outside. That's crazy hot for this time of year. So out of pure desperation, I've tried bringing one of these along. This is a thermoelectric cooler, meaning that it doesn't have a compressor. These are pretty horrible. At least the ones I know of are pretty horrible. They all seem to have similar drawbacks in that they can't cool uh, below 20 degrees Celsius under the surrounding temperature. Meaning that if you were to bring that box out on a hot sunny day where it's 30 degrees outside, the temperature inside the box wouldn't go under uh, 10 degrees Celsius. That's way too hot for a fridge. Number two. They take a really long time to cool down whatever you put inside of them. And number three, they are extremely noisy. Now originally I had planned on postponing the decision on whether or not to, I wanted to put a fridge inside of the boat until after I had uh, had my second liverboard test, until after I had figured out if I wanted to move aboard the boat on a permanent basis. But considering how much more comfortable I'd be aboard during my second liverboard test, if I had a fridge, I think I might want to reconsider. So I've taken a quick look at the alternatives, and I've identified two alternatives. I haven't bought anything yet, so you guys can sway me a little bit in either direction. Now having said that, I am heavily leaning towards option number two, as you can probably tell by the title of this video. <laughs> Option number one is going to be a um, cooler box with a compressor. So sort of like this one, but only with a compressor. I could keep it in the quarter berth, and I guess one of the upside is that it's easier to install, and I could bring it along with me to my next boat if I should ever upgrade to a bigger boat. Option number two is to convert my brand new, very well insulated ice box into a fridge. That would save a lot of space inside of the boat. And judging by the small size of my icebox and by how well insulated it is, it wouldn't require a lot of energy to keep it cooled down. Also a big plus would be uh, if I ever wanted to sell the boat, I'm guessing having a built-in fridge would be uh, a good thing. I don't think I'd get my money back, but it might be easier to find a buyer for the boat. If I want to convert the icebox into a fridge, I'll need to find a suitable kit. And the amount of suitable kits available are going to be highly limit by, limited by the small size of my icebox. So the first step is to measure the uh, internal dimensions of the icebox to see if I can find a kit with a cold plate that would actually fit inside of my tiny icebox. So let's head over and take some measurements. So here we have my icebox. As you can tell, it's rather small. Now this is a 2 liter bottle, and as you can tell, there's not a lot of space in there. But I think that's okay, because I don't really need a lot of space inside the fridge. I'm not going to keep many items in there, so I think it's going to be okay. Now the icebox is built out of these 50 millimeter thick blocks of foam, and these foam blocks are actually made specifically for this purpose. But let's go ahead and take some quick measurements. So that's about 30 centimeters, and that's about 35, and then we have a lip of about 2.5 centimeters. When looking online, there are two possible options. There's either this isotherm one, or there's this Waco one. Now the isotherm one has a slightly larger cold plate at 35 by 25 centimeters, whereas the Waco one is... Uh, 27 by 24 centimeters. But the isotherm one is actually a hundred dollars cheaper than the Waco one. I'll add links to both of them in the description and uh, I'd love to hear which one you guys would choose. The cheapest one of those two kits is just under $500. And that is a lot of money for such a small fridge. 
but having it aboard for my second liverboard test would be a big step up. I don't really see using the thermoelectric cooler box as an option because it's really not possible to sleep when it's on. I guess I could build some kind of enclosure for it out in the cockpit and keep it out there, but yeah. Also, having a real fridge aboard would be a big, big, big step up when uh, going cruising this summer. As you can probably tell, I'm sort of leaning towards ordering one of the two kits. But I'm gonna think about it for a couple of days and see if I still want to do it then. But I'd love to hear what you guys think I should do. Okay guys, I'm gonna take Yoko for a walk, so that's it for this time. As always, feel free to leave a comment and uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving me a thumbs up. See you! And that's mainly due to me not having a fridge. So... Hi guys! Not having... No, I don't have a fridge. When I was really... When I was originally... What? I don't do a lot of cooking aboard due to the fact that I don't know. And those, at least the ones I know of, I know of, know of, no, out of them. And um, I can't remember the thing. Not having a fridge aboard is very inconvenient. Uh, gah. I know of seem to have the sim similar drawbacks. I had planned on uh, postponing the decision and for me to enjoy the second liverboard test a little bit more and um, just, yeah, I don't know what to say.